we're thinking that green roofs could be really, really good for taxes because of the insulating properties of the roof and the evaporation of water by the soil and the plants that could cool buildings. They could be wonderful in the summer for Texas buildings, actually provide additional cooling and reduce energy usage. And the problem with Texas is to find plant species that can survive in such a harsh environment. Imagine you're a plant and you're growing on the roof, then um, that plant is going to receive a lot of solar radiation. It's going to be very high light conditions, not a lot of rain, particularly not this summer. So there's very little water and you're growing in maybe four inches of soil. So my part is to really look at um, what plants may work on top of a green roof and also uh, how these plants contribute to some of the energy properties of a green roof. These green roofs actually will help mitigate problems in the urban areas like uh, having uh, uh, what people call the urban heat island. Urban areas are usually a lot hotter than uh, rural areas and so having plants on your roof actually facilitate cooling. And, and we were very fortunate through the um, Master Gardener program actually to find a, a building owner in Houston who has built four green roofs on his uh, properties and he allows us to go up on the roof and measure plant growth, maybe manipulate some of the plants and also look at the water quality and energetic properties of his roofs. We're on uh, the roof of our office and it's a extensive green roof and as you can see it um, does pretty good. You know our, our electric bill in this building last month was seven hundred dollars and it was 11,000 square feet. Uh, we're, we, we run 18 hours a day, seven days a week. And so it, it uses a, a very small amount. And we do comparison by averages of other buildings. And we have a building management system that can, you know, every, you know, thousand times a second measures temperatures at the ambient air, uh, the top of the soil, two inches below the soil, and the bottom of the soil. Well, the interesting thing, it got 138 degrees on the top of the soil, but at the bottom of the soil, it never got above 85. Uh, we also, from the water reclamation that we do on site, which we collect all the water on site, we continue to use it. And we, we sprinkle the roof uh, during the really hot times at noon and at two o'clock. And we can see the temperatures at noon right as we start sprinkling it go from 100, 138 down to 87 within 20 minutes. So the impact on cooling the building, we're only cooling from 85 to 72 instead of 140 to 72. So we use a, just a tremendous amount less of, of energy to keep that, keep that air cool. And people have to see that that initial upfront cost of, you know, uh, like a rainwater harvesting system in our case cost about $1,000 is, is going to be useful and that you might even earn it back over a, conceivable period of time, maybe 10 years, but it, it, it takes some vision beyond the next five-year period.